Hi, and welcome to a series of videos on the philosophy of probability and statistics. My name is William Briggs, and today I'm going to be demonstrating to you that probability is a matter of information. It is a matter of logic. Uh, that probability, like all logical argument, is dependent on the information or premises that you choose. And to show this to you, I'm going to use these two objects right here. These are called Pwapwe, and they are moon stones or moon sticks, uh, divination uh, stones. And uh, the way they work is very, very simple. I picked these up at uh, Longshan Temple, uh, Dragon Mountain Temple in Taipei. Um, they're very simple. You go to the temple and you ask the deity a, quest a question. The question can only have a yes or a no answer. And the way it works is you either stand or you kneel. Uh, you put the question and then you throw these things and they'll bounce around. The floor will be uh, concrete or tile or stone or even in some cases uh, hard dirt. And they'll bounce around and they'll come to rest uh, in only one of a certain number of positions. First thing that could happen is that they could both be up like this. All right, this is the moon side up. You could have both up like this and this is a no. Another thing that could happen is they could both be flat side up like this. That's also a no. A third thing that could happen is one could have the flat side and one could have the moon side up. That's a yes. And lastly, the fourth thing that could happen is this one could have the moon side up and this one could have the flat side. That's also a yes. Now, conditional on just that information and no other information at all, the probability that we see a yes is one half. That's because there are two possibilities uh, of four and one of those possibilities must happen. Um, now, notice that I haven't conditioned on quite a lot of information. So one bit of information I have not conditioned on or included in my list of premises was the action or the mindset of the deity. Now, of course, if we knew that and the deity really was monkeying with these things in order to give us a yes or a no answer, and we knew his state of mind, why then the probability would it be either one or a zero for us receiving a yes, depending on what the deity's mind was. But since we're not claiming to know what's uh, going on in his recesses, we're not putting that as part of our conditioning information. Okay? Another thing is, uh, which is confusing to some people, particularly when they start thinking about uh, probability, is in most textbooks they use coin examples, uh, coin flips, uh, dice throws, and things like that. And the difficulty there is these objects have a built-in symmetry, or they have a built-in seeming symmetry. They're not really symmetric. Take any coin. Let's think about American quarters. While an American quarter has ridges along the side, it has on one side an image of the president's face, and on the other side, oh, it could be an eagle, it could be a state's emblem. The mass of metal in that coin is not symmetrically distributed. There are subtle uh, deviations from symmetry. And the same is true for any die. Any real die has uh, surfaces that may not be perfectly flat. They have little holes drilled into them so the mass can't be the same distributed across the surface. Uh, they have paint put on them, perhaps not equally thickly across all of the little dots and all these kind of things. But because it seems symmet uh, symmetric, people get caught up and they think the symmetry of the problem has something to do with the probability. That's because probability is not the language of causality. Not, not generally. In special cases it could be, but not generally. But when we're trying to think of the probability of a coin flip coming up, or a die showing a certain number, or indeed these Boabue showing a yes or a no, we try to think what's going to make it happen. We try to think what's going to cause, what bit of physics is going to make these things turn out to be the way they are. But that's not what probability is. Probability is going to be a matter of information for us. Now think about this. I'm gonna, this is how I'm going to prove it to you. Look at these. These are very obviously highly asymmetric. Uh, just take a look at this one right here. It starts with a ridge. Maybe it's a little bit difficult to see. It gets sort of flat. 
and the ridge takes up again on this side. This one's a little bit different. It has a ridge starting here. It's very flat, stays very flat, and the ridge only appears again at the very end. And if you hold them together like this, it'll be a little bit more obvious. Pressing them together as I do, maybe, let's see, twist this a bit like that. You can see right there, these things are not even the same exact shape. So, and if you go to a real temple, uh, these, of course, I've never used except for demonstration. Um, the paint's worn off in various places. They're waterlogged and dried out again. There's chips, there's cracks, all kind of things. So no two of these are alike. So, but now we know this. This is part of the information we're going to consider. But we have no way of knowing how of these asymmetries can affect the fall of these and of their eventual resting state. We don't know. And because we don't know, our probability is not modified. Because again, probability is a measure of information. As a famous mathematician said, De Finetti, probability does not exist. Probability is not a property of these two pieces of wood. Because consider, if I add some information to this, I can predict the outcome of these perfectly. So what kind of information would that be? Well, I could start by saying, well, I'm going to hold them in my hand just so. Imagine now that I have a physical measure, measuring apparatus, very sophisticated. I could measure the exact weight distribution of these things. I could look exactly how far from the ground they are. I could throw them and I could take a, a look at exactly how much force I am imparting forward, how much laterally, how much up and down. I could take a look at the exact amount of spin that I'm imparting. I can measure the density of the air. And when they hit the ground, there'll be a certain elasticity to the surface of the ground, causing these to rebound more or less. There'll be friction that interacts with the paint on these things. I can take all that stuff into account, plus knowledge I have of the equations of motion. And I could put all that stuff as my conditioning premises. And if I knew all that, then I would know the probability of these things coming up, 0 or 1. I mean, that is to say, coming up yes or no, 0 or 1, similar way of thinking about things. But the probability of them coming up yes or no would be, again, either 0 or 1, depending on what the exact starting conditions, the initial conditions that, of the physics experiment that I'm doing. Now, this has been done. With coins, for example, people have built coin tossing machines where at each and every flip of the coin, the exact same amount down to measurement error, down to a very small uh, type of error, the coin is given the exact amount of force forward uh, in every other direction, the same amount of spin, the surface remains exactly the same, and that coin comes up heads or tails each and every time. That's the language of causality. We know what's making it happen because we've studied the physics for that very simple uh, event. And so we know this is not a simple event. This, the physics to describe these would be extraordinarily difficult. And that's the key uh, because, well, the, the first thing to understand is, if you don't already, probability is definitely a matter of information. But what's interesting about this is they are very unpredictable. And when you look at uh, divination in, in particular, divination always uses unpredictability. Uh, there are so many different methods of divination, cutting a card out of a shuffled deck, uh, where we can't predict what the card will, is going to be. You're going to gut open a chicken and examine its liver. No way to tell in advance exactly the size and shape of the, the liver. You look at a flight of birds and they'll go off either this or that direction, all this kind of thing. All of these involve uh, very difficult, very physically um, intensely complex situations. And think about it. Because what I'm asking the deity to do is I'm asking him to just manipulate the force on this one just a tiny bit. After all, these are probably chaotic, and that means they're very sensitive to the initial conditions. If I ask the deity while well, this thing is in flight, just to give it a little bit more push on this one, and when this one hits, just give it a skosh more friction when it hits the ground so that it turns up yes or no. That's what I'm asking to happen when I'm doing divination. And isn't that kind of interesting? There's a sort of mysticism about probability that Kynes, who we'll talk about next time, 
called charlatanism or the smack of astrology or alchemy. And we think we've left that behind, but we really haven't. And that's what I'm going to investigate next time. Because think, if I'm really trying to get the deity to tell me something, I could just place these on the floor like this and I'll say, well, listen, uh, deity, if you think um, the answer is yes to my question, in the next minute or so, flip this one. Well, that's asking quite a lot, isn't it? That's asking him to do quite a lot of stuff because that's a very intricate operation. It requires a lot of force and precision control and energy expended on the deity's part. But when we're just tossing these kinds of things, he has to operate on a very micro scale. So that's rather interesting when you think about it. And uh, we will see that this sort of mysticism that you think we should have left behind has in fact not been left behind. We fully embrace it in, in modern probability uh, and we, we should not. And that's because we still don't understand probability is just a matter of information or at least we don't fully recognize that. That's all for this time. Uh, join me next time when we do talk about the mysticism in probability. Thank you very much.